Okay guys, hello. Um, just a rundown on my new jet that's going on a motor motorbike. Um, yes, so this is the console and I've got a couple of sparkers here, the igniters. Uh, don't want to get that too close, it'll probably spark out the, uh, the chips and um, damage my camera if it jumps through. Anyway, look, I was going to mount that through through the console there, but it sticks out a bit and there's no room. So I've ordered some buttons. See it sticks out the side there. Um, yeah, you might have saw in my last video, tips and tricks. Um, now, it's not difficult to, to run these units. Um, all these electronic units. There's a lot of wiring, yes, but you just got to manage the wiring. And to do that, I, I just use the central wiring board, which I showed you in my last video, which is very easy to use. Um, now, like I said before, you're better off to use electronic gauges on these jets um, with a transducer because of the, the fluctuating, that's especially the pressure, because of the fluctuating uh, gauges. They tend to flutter around and, and fluctuate. So I'm going to switch this on right now, give you a bit of a look. Um, I've even hooked up the fans to the to the main button. So this is to my starter. So if I flick that, right, and I go down here, I'll show you if I flick that on and off there. That flicks on, on and off my, uh, my starter. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank up the oil. Okay, so I've got to keep an eye on this. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. You'll hear it. Oh, there we go. Now turn it down. Otherwise, it'll blow the seals out. So it's just enough to get the uh, the impellers turning. So I'm going to turn that down to about mm, 30, 30 pounds. Okay. Now, oh, what I've got here, also, I've hooked up my starter. Now, that motor is definitely overkill. Definitely overkill. Um, way too big. However, I don't think there's much of a problem with flow. Um, now I've got my Bendix clutch in there, as you can see, it's very hard to see. But what I might do, while I'm holding it here, sorry about the, the shaky camera work, I'll see if I can see it, so... Okay, so you might be able to see that clutch flicking in and out. I'll get right up close. So yeah, you can sort of see it. There we go, there's a good... So it pushes in, and off again. So that, that's pretty good. That's that's running really well. So it took me um, quite a few hours to file all of this to a smooth sort of sort of edging. Now I'm going to actually run an air filter over the top of that. A big six-cylinder car air filter. A lot of people say that it'll choke it up, but come on, guys. You know we're not running high-performance, you know, drag strip stuff here, and we're nowhere near going to have this thing, you know, powering, you know, um, you know, at full full throttle all the way. This is for a motorbike, like I said. Okay, so I might just pull this off. Oh, okay, yeah, it is loose enough. And underneath, it's just loosely bolted there at the moment. So what I did was I measured the holes between the two, and then I measured three. I measured out where the holes were, and then I measured out the center, and I drilled the center out. And then I basically drew a circle to the width of the, uh, the holes of the, the motor, stuck the motor through, and then later on I drilled the bigger hole. So you can see I've, I've rounded it all off. Um, that's just so, you know, there's not too many sharp edges of the air. There's still gonna be a big current thing through here. I mean, you can bolt a, a cone on, on the outside. So anyway, look, I'll give you a quick look at how this clutch works. I don't like doing it like this. I actually upgraded the rubber. I went to the rubber shop and um, I shouldn't have the hole in the center of the rubber there. So the next one, I'm not going to do that, otherwise it'll wear out quickly. The rubbers that you get are very, very cheap, so. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna, and there we go. You can see it flick. So each time it starts, it flicks and it pushes against the nut, and that gets it going. So in this video, um, I'll explain to you how to mount your Bendix clutch. When you mount it, especially if you upgrade the rubbers, which I, I, I suggest you upgrade the rubber, if your end's not sticking out much, like mine, don't worry about getting a hole in the center. Don't worry about putting, 
like I said. Um, now when you mount it, you want to mount it fairly close to the nut, as close as you can without it interfering. Um, otherwise you'll get all sorts of vibration from the, the movement of the mount to the, the Bendix clutch. So that's, it, that's how you mount your, um, your Bendix starter. So let's see how skilled I am. I'm going to try and bolt this back on while I'm holding the camera here. Oh, I dropped the nut. Uh, okay, back we go. Yeah. See, I'm not doing too bad. There we go. Holding the camera and bolting it up at the same time. Like a pro. Alrighty. Um, Terminator Jet A1. Thanks, buddy, for the great long chat we had on the phone the other day. He's going to send me off some... Um, some parts. Terminator Jet A1. Subscribe to his channel. He's going to have some cool jet. He's actually got some quite cool jet stuff there, including a jet engine very similar to mine that's already completed with the turbo shaft already hooked up. Okay. Um, so I look forward to that little present you're going to send off in the mail. Um, I'll uh, actually film that uh, when, when it arrives. I'll leave it unpack it. So oh, I've got a few. A few leaks in the oil there at the moment. I think that's out of the top. I can't quite, because of the configuration, I've got to grind a little bit of the, the plate away there so I can get the spanner in and, or the shifter in and really crank that up. Um, so, yeah. Alrighty. What I've done also with these three phase motors, you don't have to set them to high torque especially if you've got a big ass motor like this. Set them to just standard, zero, zero percent. If you've got a programmable ESC, which is, this is programmable, it's got a little card with it. Uh, I think that's the card, there's the card there. So you plug your, your card in, turn it on, and then you set the numbers to specified. Okay, so look, set the brake on full. Set it so there's no reverse and uh, set the timing at zero. So you don't need overkill. Um, look, a, a smaller motor, the next size down, would do this very, very efficiently. Also, when you get your clutch, this is one I, I, I stuffed earlier, I pulled the pin out, that's the center of the clutch. Find the right size shaft bit. I've actually had to put in a, um, a grub screw. So you've got to get a tap, a grub screw, and the right shaft bit. Put it under your drill press and drill it out with a drill press. They will generally centralise themselves if you take your time when they when they drill. So you don't really need a lathe. So you just bring it down, you scribe the corners out so it centralises itself, and then gently um, adjust the, the drill up and down and so forth. So I've got this to one umbilical cord. One umbilical cord. And that hooks up to, we've even got fans hooked up this time. So when you switch it on, on and off, it turns the fans on as well. Um, so that's the starter. The starter's on the on position now, right? However, the whole unit is on the on position. That's so nobody bumps it and switches off the oil and burns out your engine. Okay, so that's the starter off. So that's in run position right now. We can turn this up and down more or less oil pressure and there's absolutely no no fluctuation because it samples it it samples it every every like third of a second or something really you know it's very quick i've also got the temperature gauges i've got to hook up so um okay that's all right that's that's enough for this film um i'm gonna do another film on gearboxes and uh how i'm gonna do the gearbox so please subscribe um, it's a little button underneath and uh, you'll get more tips and tricks on how to build these jet engines without spending shitloads of money. And that's what it's all about. It's about uh, trying to do our hobbies efficiently without having to spend all this money on, on, on crap. So eBay's awesome. eBay's great. Everything here was ordered on eBay. It's just a matter of time waiting for them to come in. But if you've got, uh, if you've got funds, just buy them from the local retail shop. Um, Okay, please subscribe, uh, whack in a comment what you'd like to learn about, because I, I would surely um, let you know. Um, again guys, people keep telling me gravity feed. Just before I go, gravity feed works on these things. 
They're not ball bearing, okay? They're a slip bearing. Okay, do not, it's dangerous. Do not gravity feed these turbos, okay? It's dangerous and quite frankly, if you gravity feed, I think you're a wanker, okay? And you really don't understand how, how these jets work. Okay, so a um, bit of controversy there um, and pretty straight to the point. So uh, don't do it, it is dangerous. Um, you know, unless you want a frontal lobotomy with a piece of uh, inconnel steel stuck in your forehead, which, you know, if you think gravity feed's a good idea, perhaps, you know, you need a frontal lobotomy. Um, all right, no worries. Please subscribe. And, uh, yeah, hope that little bit of comedy at the end there uh, was enough to uh, get you to hit that little button underneath. Thank you very much.